Hey guys, Ron here, and as you know, each Pokemon has a possibility of having two types. Well, to be fair, terrestrialization kind of messes up that rule. <laughs> it didn't even introduce you yet. Uh, wait a minute or two. As I was saying, Pokemon have types, but not every type combination has been used up. There are nine combinations that Game Freak hasn't utilized yet. And a bunch more combinations if you don't count alternate forms. You guys get the point. There's a lot. So I thought I'd make a few to fill in those gaps. But since it would be a giant undertaking, I thought why not utilize another YouTuber's love of Fakemon to help out so I have a bit less work to do. That's why I invited Prag Magic to help me curate this list. While over on my channel, Ron and I did the same but for alternate forms. While forms like Rotom Moe and Galarian Weezing are cool, we wanted to see some completely new Fakemon with those type combinations. So make sure to check out both parts of this mega collab. And if you're new, leave a like if you enjoyed, and subscribe if you haven't, because making all sorts of Fakemon on this channel is what we do best. Okay, we, it's just me, really. <laughs> uh, it's just me on this channel. How about we begin with all the normal type combinations that haven't been utilized yet? They're basically half of this list, and normal steel seems like something you can easily do. Slap some armor on a basic animal and you got one. A few months ago, I turned the Doge meme into a fake mon called Kashiba. It's a steel normal type covered in gold, making it look like various Chinese and Japanese statues and figures. But it's clearly a meme-based Pokemon, nothing too serious. That's why it's Brandon's turn to do the heavy lifting and provide us with legit entry. And heavy is a great description for this Pokemon. We have the normal steel type Sirolger from my India-based region, Devar, who I worked with an artist astray to bring to life. While it may seem as simple as a rhino with a sword for a horn, there is more to it than that. It is actually based on a kind of weapon, the Pata, which is essentially a gauntlet sword, with Sirolger's body acting like the gauntlet of the Pata. It is also based on the mythical creature called the Carcadon, which is what people of the 10th century interpreted a rhino to be. Its horn could supposedly protect against poison. And what is immune to the poison type? You guessed it, steel. It's exactly the type of fake mom people would expect from this type. I like how you used an animal that already has armor and weaponry, so everything feels supernatural. I not super natural, because it's a normal type, just very natural. Just like how I assume a normal rock type would be. The average creature on Earth interacts with rocks, considering we're all on a giant ball of rock. And rocks are sometimes very sharp. That's why our honorable mention is Delagpine, also from the Devar region, who I worked with seriously not to create, by the way. This Pokemon is about as simple as its typing. Just swap in sharp stalactites and stalagmites for the quills of a porcupine, and boom! You've got yourself a normal rock type. While I love everything about Stalagpine, I've been dying to make a chipmunk Pokemon for my upcoming region, and what better way to debut it than on this video? Since I took the whole concept of chipmunks uh, shoving food in their cheeks and combined it with the idea of hoarding gems and jewels. Check out Gypsumunk, the stash Pokemon from Gypsum and Monk. These tiny Pokemon are incredibly brave. They sneak their way into treacherous caves and steal from Gabite, Sableye, and Drodigan to add to their own growing stash of gems. Gypsumunk stuff giant hunks of jewels into their cheeks as they run away from layers and banks. They trade valuables with Hydrat, which is another fake mon I made, if you didn't know. In battle, they pull out big pieces of rocks from their cheeks and chuck them at opponents. They will even block hits by placing rocks between them and their foe. They have the abilities Cheek Pouch, Unburden, and Pickpocket. Oh my gosh, that's adorable. And I love how it fits its type since it isn't fully made of rock. I'm assuming it's a relatively early game fake mon too? Correct, but enough about my fake mon. How about we show the viewers a family of fake mon we worked together on for this video? So Ron told me to come up with a suitable normal ice type. The only rule he gave me was that it needed to be based on a North American animal and its surrounding culture. Then Brandon said he had the best inspiration for this Pokemon, a bald-tailed cat. This North American cryptid that basically looks like a mountain lion with a hard ball at the end of its tail that it uses to whack its prey with. And what's a North American sport associated with ice? Curling. Hockey. Hockey. So we thought, why not give a mountain lion cub a hockey puck tail made of ice, and have it evolve into a swift mountain lion with hockey pads and a hockey stick tail? That's why Brandon commissioned JJ Mons to create Puckub, the odd tail Pokemon. Puckub, as its artwork suggests, loves to ride around on their tail, both for fun and as a means of escape. It's multifunctional too. They can use it as a shield or a blunt weapon if necessary. They are usually seen high up on mountains where they can easily slide down slopes for a quick escape. I love how Puckup's eyes look like a sideways hockey pucks. It's very seamless, but I can't wait to see the evolution. Then let's check out Goleo. Using their cryogenically fortified front legs, Goleo act as a guardian of Puckup. 
using their front legs and shoulders to bash into opponents. While normally docile, this Pokemon will become aggressive towards others if their litter of Puckub is present, and are known to use their tail to knock Puckub away from danger. I love the patterns and expression. It really looks like a mascot while still working in the Pokemon world. I could say the same about the fake mon you made that I think fills the bug normal type very well. Trick Roll. I mean, it's a Pokemon based on the Rick Astley memes, but can definitely work on its own, especially with its surprising voice ability, which prioritizes sound-based moves, right? Yeah, it really helps it utilize all the normal type sound moves with same type attack bonus. While an Earworm is a fine inspiration for a bug normal type, your Bug Grub and Bee Terrier by Trevenart are mighty fine entries as well. I mean, some dog breeds, especially puppies with their wrinkly skin, really do look like beetle larvas. And that was exactly my thought when making them. Bug Grub, just like a baby puppy, or Magikarp, is essentially useless until it evolves, rolling or flopping about until B Terrier can provide it with food or comfort. Though, I don't exactly know how comforted I am by B Terrier's thousand yard stare. Also, B Terrier is known to carry many diseases that could prove fatal to humans, but its mouth is too small to bite anything, even if it wanted to. Bugs really are the most normal kind of creature on planet Earth, so you'd think adding a normal type to a lot of the most unassuming bug types would work. But what about combining bug with the most fantastical type in the game? Fairy? We, we already have Ribombi. I meant dragon, and no, Flygon isn't one. So how about you come up with one of your very own? I don't want to go with the obvious dragonfly route. I'll reserve that for a Mega Flygon or something. How about we take inspiration from the Hallucigenia? You're talking about the extinct Lobopod, which basically looks like a freaky, many-legged worm? I'm sure Attack on Titan fans would recognize them. They are really alien looking, and could be interpreted as a bug crossed with a sea serpent. That's exactly what I'm going to be doing. Making a Pokemon that is a cross between Asian dragons and Hallucigenia. I'm even giving it uh, koi fish patterns to tie in with the whole carps becoming sea dragons legend that Gyarados is based on. Here is Hallucerate the overwhelming Pokemon from Hallucinate and Lacerate. These Pokemon's many patterns, spikes, and legs overwhelm opponents. Foes are unable to determine how to attack Hallucerate. They end up giving up. Even if a predator were to make a move, they would get impaled by Hallucerate's spikes. When it's Hallucerate's turn to attack, it crushes its opponents within a deadly coil. It releases an order that makes it look even bigger and more menacing than it truly is. Hallucerate simply enjoys strolling on the sea floor and does not wish to fight. It has the abilities Marvel Scale, Intimidate, and Swift Swim. Dude, giving red Pokemon blue shinies somehow always turns out fantastic. Bisharp and Tyrantrum are another example of that. And what a concept! I don't know if I would have thought to combine all those different things into one incredibly creative Pokemon. <laughs> well, I'm all out of creative juices for the next minute, so I'd introduce the Ice Poison type Pokemon, but all I have is this randomly generated Pokemon I made a few years ago. It injects poison from its beak. That's really it. I like it, but it's not fully fleshed out. How about you give him a real entry while I rest? Rest easy, Ron. For an Ice Poison type, I introduce you to Corneran Viper which I made for my Cornero region, which is based on the Four Corners region of the US, and worked with Lewis EGB to create. These Saviper fled into the Frostcap Mountains of Cornera to get away from Zangoose, who were hunting them a bit more severely in this region. This Pokemon is based on the folklore creatures simply called Snow Snakes, which supposedly are highly venomous and are active during the winter months. Now that is a cold-blooded reptile. Honestly, it looks way chiller now that it's not worried about Zangoose. But now it's time for the complete opposite, Ground Fairy. I honestly thought I really already did one back when I made a pink fairy armadillo Pokemon, but that was a rock fairy type. For ground fairy, however, I want to make a fairy type rival to Garchomp. Kind of like how Tyranitar has Duraludon nowadays. Exactly. If there's a dragon type land shark in Pokemon, why not make a fairy type land dolphin? It'll have weaker stats since it's not a pseudo legendary, but will obviously have the type advantage. To contrast with Garchomp's dark blue color scheme, it should be based on the Amazon River dolphins, who have a pink tint. And to all who don't know, there is Amazonian folklore surrounding these dolphins, called the Encantado. At night, they would transform into young, handsome, well-dressed men and seduce local ladies. Palafin is also based on this myth, but the concept is different, so get over it. So that's what we're making, a sharp and fancy looking land dolphin. I want to make it look natural like Garchomp, patterns that allude to a nice suit, but nothing explicitly clothed-like. Now welcome Enchanterrain, the approaching Pokemon. They swim in sand dunes, leaping high into the sky and landing next to a potential friend. They love approaching strange Pokemon and people. They show off their talents every day. 
Enchanted Rain summons gusts of sand and fairy dust that it uses to carry off others. In battle, it sends its opponents flying with a blast of sparkling sand. They can instantly pulverize the ground beneath them, creating new sand for them to travel in and evade their foes. This is such a cool take on an Encantado Pokemon. It's a tough myth to turn into a Pokemon because it must have explicitly human features. Which, as we know, Pokemon fans don't usually like in their designs, but I think you were able to strike a nice balance between human and dolphin. Although, selfishly, I would have preferred a shiny that barely changes color, like Garchomp's. But let's keep this fairy frenzy going. Got any ideas for Fire Fairy? All I got are these old Corneran Swirlix and Slurpuff designs. They're based on s'mores. I figured another sugary, fluffy food would make for an easy swapping of concepts. And what is more American than a good old-fashioned roasted marshmallow paired with chocolate and sandwiched between two graham crackers? But didn't you make a Fire Fairy-type starter Pokemon for your Asone region a while back? I loved how Oxenerate interpreted the fairy typing as something sacred, like a worshipped cow. I would like Oxenerate to be our main entry, but its art is so old. I would change a bunch of stuff if I were to get a chance to redesign it. Then why don't you redesign it? It's your video. Oh yeah, I can do that. Okay, well then, the original Oxenrate had an awkward pose and its proportions were too humanoid. The head, upper body, and legs took up similar amounts of space and most importantly, it stood. I was very adamant that it would be bipedal since out of all my starters, it was the one with the closest relationships to humans. Since it was worshipped like a god, I wanted it to look intelligent and tall. I even gave it a smile, but I thought the smile anthropomorphized it a bit too much. I'm not changing much other than the proportions, it'll still have the ability to stand up, but like Rillaboom, who also stands up, I want Oxenrate to be uh, in a dynamic mid-lunge pose. It's in motion, and when it wants to get around, it goes down on all fours. It's more top-heavy, with slightly less ornaments. Its fur looks a bit more like a pharaoh's headpiece, and the fire on the head and tail look far less static. But the most notable change is that its golden cuffs aren't just flat textures, they are risen above the fur. Now that is the new and improved Oxenerate. Yeah. Now if you want the whole spiel, go check out the original video about my Asone region starters. All you gotta know is that as a fire fairy type, it represents all the good and spiritual aspects of fire, not the destructive ones. This is a Pokemon of light, warmth, and life. It makes crops grow, but causes droughts when humans aren't upholding good virtues. And that leaves us with one final type combination, Ghost Rock. I mean, Spiritomb is already an honorary rock ghost type, and I'm sure what we come up with would also be some kind of spirit bound to a rock. Exactly. Just a few months ago, in my second turning anime characters into Pokemon video, I made a Fakemon inspired by Eren Yeager, which was this angry spirit that entered a rock husk through a hole in the front and pilots this rock titan that it uses to attack with. Weird, because I have an eerily similar rock ghost Regirock evolution that also has a hole in its chest. Regihollow. It evolves from Regirock in a hypothetical future in which all the rocks that used to make up its body became more scarce due to overmining of resources. So it became hollowed out like its name suggests, eventually replacing them with ghostly energy. Well then how about we use both of them? I wouldn't have it any other way. What a perfect way to end the video. If you want to see more unused type combinations like Poison Psychic or Fire Ice that were only given to forms instead of a completely new Pokemon, go check out our other part over at Pragmagic. If you already came from Brandon's channel, how about checking out some of the other fake mom videos I made? They're on screen right now. Check the description for the music I used, the t-shirts I made for you guys, and my Patreon where you can get cool rewards like seeing my videos days early. Clicking on the join button gets you the same rewards too. Follow me on Twitter where I post sneak peeks and full art as well. Bye!